Our scripture this morning is taken from Exodus, chapter 17, 1 through 7. Water from the rock. Not to be, dis not to be confused with the rock who is the art actor. Okay, water from the rock. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, give us water to drink. Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there and they grumbled against Moses. They said, why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children live and die? Live, stop, live stock. Okay, well, it's hyphenated in here. <laughs> Livestock die of thirst. Then Moses cried out to the Lord, what am I to do with these people? They're almost ready to stone me. And the Lord answered Moses, walk on ahead of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribeth because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Here ends the reading of his holy word. So over the next several weeks, we're going to be focusing on a series called The Enemies of Gratitude. Now we as a people, we like to believe that we are truly grateful for everything that we receive. We pray each week at the very least, and we did so today, asking God to give us our daily bread and to forgive us our trespasses. And we pray each week over the offering that we are thankful to give back a part of what the Lord has given to us. But we must ask ourselves, and this can only be answered by you yourself, are we really giving thanks to the Lord because we are grateful for what he has done in our lives? Or are we doing so out of some sort of misplaced feeling of requirement? So over the next few weeks, we'll discuss how we can increase our gratitude in our lives and what in our lives we need to look at to make sure that we're not stopping gratitude from growing. Well, today we're gonna to focus on nostalgia and how it can stop us from having gratitude in our lives. Now, over the last few years, I have experienced a phenomenon in my life that I have found very disturbing. You see, as I have listened to the radio the music that I enjoyed when I was younger has been showing up on the classic rock station. And I cannot understand how that has happened. And perhaps something like that has happened in your life as well. Now, I have also noticed that kids are dressing up as uh, people from the 90s for Halloween. And I don't understand what is so cool about dressing up like people the way that they used to just a few years ago. Uh, what, what's that? Uh, 1992 was 30 years ago? And I don't think that can possibly be right. You see, whenever we hear music from our youth, or perhaps when we see someone wearing what we used to, we tend to wistfully think of our youth. We think about how great things were back then and how everything these days is just complete garbage. See, we long for those days when things seemed so much more simple and easy. We think about how there were not the same problems that we see in the world today when we were growing up, and we wonder what is wrong with people these days. That is nostalgia. It is a sentimental longing for the, or affection for the past, typically for a period or place with happy personal associations. Now, nostalgia can be a good thing. 
It is important for us to remember who we are and where we come from. And it is a good thing for us to remember those great moments in our lives. And it is a good thing for, to remember the people that came before us and helped to shape us into who we are today. But the problem with nostalgia is that we often view the past through rose-colored glasses. Things were most likely not as good as we remember them being. Now this week, as I thought back on my own childhood, I can remember so many wonderful things happening in my life. You know, I found myself being very nostalgic this week. But if I were to take a historical approach to what was really happening during those times, let's say again I'm looking at 1992. Though it seemed like a good year in my life, it was not a year that was perfect in this world. In that year, we can look back and see, and I'm sure you remember this, the riots that occurred in Los Angeles. Our country at that time was embroiled in a war in Iraq. And as I thought more about it, Three of my cousins were serving in Iraq during Operation Desert Storm. But you see, though I can think about mostly good things from my childhood during that time period, throughout the world there were difficulties that were being experienced. The same can be said of our own memories. Though we remember things as ideal, there may have been problems that we were just too young to realize were happening. See, one problem with nostalgia is it stops us from seeing things as they truly were. We find ourselves longing for that time or that place, but the truth is it may never have really existed. Now, another problem with nostalgia is when we constantly find ourselves looking back on how great the past was. When we do that, we fail to see the blessings that are happening to us in the present. And as we look at our scripture for today, we clearly see the Israelites suffering from a bad case of nostalgia. As they're wandering in the desert, they begin to complain about being thirsty. They come to Moses and ask him, why did you lead us here? Did you bring us out here just so that we would die of thirst? They are so angry with Moses that they are on the verge of stoning him to death. It is almost like they're saying, hey, Moses, you remember when God helped you part the Red Sea so we could escape slavery? Yeah, well, what have you done for us lately? At least in Egypt, we had water to drink. And in the book of Numbers, the Israelites take that nostalgia even further. They complain to Moses again, but this time about the lack of food in the desert. And the food that God was now providing for them. See, he was giving them manna to eat every day, but that was just not good enough. For some of the Israelites. In Numbers 11, 4 through 6, uh, we hear this from the Israelites. Now the rabble that was among them had a strong craving. And the people of Israel also wept again and said, Oh, that we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we ate in Egypt that cost nothing. The cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up. And there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Hey Moses, you know how God is feeding us now and giving us water to drink? But do you remember that delicious fish that we used to get in Egypt? Oh, it was so good. All the wonderful veggies that we had as well. I can't believe we ever agreed to come out here with you. We had it so good when we were there. Now all we have is this manna. And if I ever have to look at manna again, I'm going to barf. You see, the people of Israel were allowing their nostalgia for that food that they used to eat in, Israel, or in Egypt to blind them to two facts. The first was this. They forgot very quickly when they were eating all those wonderful foods, they were also slaves in Egypt. They were constantly being forced to make brick after brick for the Pharaoh. They were being beaten and killed by their overseers. Oh, but they did have fish, by the way. See, the fact being that they were failing to see 
the blessings that God had in store for them. They were looking back on that past with those rose-colored glasses, so much so that they were willing to trade their freedom, a home in the promised land, and being God's chosen people for some fish. And when we read those parts of the Bible, we often ask ourselves, how could the Israelites be so ungrateful to a God that has led them to all this glory? Well, we as people, and I don't mean just Christians, I mean human beings, we are really good at seeing the faults in others, but missing them in ourselves. When you woke up this morning, did you say, thank you for another day, Father? I cannot wait to go and worship you this day. Or did you say, oh my goodness, I really don't want to get up today. I don't want to go to church and listen to that guy again. Can't I just stay in bed and maybe worship you some other way today, God? Did you wake up last Monday and say, thank you for the opportunity to work, Father. Thank you for allowing me to provide for my family. I pray that I can show others your love this week. Or did you wake up and say, oh no, not again. Not another week of this. Did you find yourself looking towards the past and it's more simple time and thinking, I wish I could go back there. You see, nostalgia constantly blinds us to the blessings that God is working in our lives right now. And when that happens, it stops us from being grateful for those blessings. Now I have struggled with nostalgia myself at times as well, if I'm being honest with you. You see, there are some Sundays when I think, you know, it would be nice just to come and sit at church today. To only, I wish today I only had to worry about my kids being too loud or having their toys strung out all over the aisle. I wish that was the only thing that I need to be concerned about during church today, that I only have to worry about making it there on time today, and then to simply sit and listen. You see, there are times that I am nostalgic for the days when I wasn't the pastor. And when I have those days, I remind myself of this fact. I have been given a wonderful gift this Sunday. I've been given the chance to stand up and to proclaim the name of Jesus Christ as our Savior. And I've been given the blessing of leading two wonderful churches. When things get crazy in my life, and quite honestly, they do quite a bit, and I wonder how I will ever get the sermon done this week, and I just want to come and listen like I used to, I remember the blessings that God has given to me. That way I don't get stuck in my own nostalgic thoughts. See, I hope you can find the blessings that are happening in your life right now as well. That way we don't find ourselves acting like the Israelites in the desert, finding ourselves willing to become slaves again to that past just to eat some fish. My challenge for you this week is this. What is one thing you can do this week to focus on the blessings that God has given to you. Do so this week.